<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to VU Sports Wired. I'm Jackson Martin. Alongside me is Reed Harris. We got a lot to talk about today in the world of Vanderbilt sports, so let's get to it. First, we're going to start off talking about your Commodores, the SEC Tournament Champions. And then we're going to break down what happened in that championship game with Kentucky that led to the Doors' 71-64 victory. Next, we're going to talk about the Commodores' number five seed and what it means for the team. We're going to take a look at their path back to the Final Four in New Orleans. And then we're going to take a look, or well, we're not going to take a look because me and Reed are going to tell you what you should expect in this tournament. Then we're going to talk about the women's team who is also in the tournament. And then we're going to take a walk around the bubble. So let's get to it. Starting with the SEC Tournament Championship, Reed, three games for the Commodores, beat Georgia, Ole Miss, and Kentucky. What did you see that you liked and you didn't like from the team? There really was a lot to like from the team as a whole going through it. Uh, one of the things that you look at that Vanderbilt really excelled in, finally for the first time in a really long time, uh, was quality bench minutes. Uh, you look especially in the championship game, uh, Kedra Johnson at the point played 23 minutes uh, in the guard, which is huge. Uh, and, and the bench, the quality bench depth to him, Rod Odom, obviously Steve Chingang and Dejon Parker came in. And uh, every one of Vanderbilt's starters, um, other than John Jenkins, of course, played fewer minutes than their Kentucky counterpart. Uh, and that is a huge stat. It, it gives us fresh legs, and Vanderbilt kept fresh legs throughout the three-day stretch, and hopefully will contain, continue to have uh, be, those fresh legs going into the NCAA tournament. Uh, so looking at the three games as a whole, the bench just played so well. Absolutely, especially, and, and I know you mentioned it, Kedron Johnson. I really feel like he won that game in the final minutes, going on a five-point run all by himself, and scored the game-winning basket in the NCAA championship, or the SEC championship with that beautiful up and under finish. Uh, he carried the team when they had a, a bit of a, a lag in the momentum and it really looked like Kentucky was going to finish us off once and for all. Yeah, Kedron, he came in down the stretch, hit the basket, uh, the reverse layup and the free throw. Uh, without his performance, you know, Brad Tinsley down the stretch this year has shown that he can't always carry the team offensively. Um, and Kedron did just that, came in when he needed to, uh, took some of Brad's minutes and then in, in that final, in that five minute stretch, um, in that five minute stretch at the end, he took so many minutes and really came through. Uh, so I don't know how much that will show looking ahead, uh, looking at the NCAA tournament, how many minutes he's going to get. That'll be an interesting storyline to watch. Um, but, but keeping in, in, still talking about the SEC tournament, looking back, uh, the first two games, like I said, uh, bench depth was huge. Um, Jeff Taylor's performance was huge, uh, especially on the defensive end of the court. Uh, let's talk, talk about his, uh, his ability to shut down um, Kentucky's yeah. Michael Kidd Gilchrist wow. when it came and, down the stretch. And get fouls on Kid Gilchrist, oh, yeah. which he, he had done previously too, but for the second time in a row made Kid Gilchrist foul out. Uh, however, some things I think that have to worry you uh, about this Vanderbilt team in that tournament is, uh, I mean, what's cooler than being cool, it's ice cold, and that's how the Commodores started off each of their first two games, failing to break 30 points in the first half against Georgia and Ole Miss, uh, and just looking horrific at times, couldn't shoot the ball, had trouble slowing down two, quite frankly, mediocre SEC teams, which is troublesome. Uh, obviously, it turned around the second half of those games, and it looked like it was going to be another slow start against Kentucky, but uh, Jeff Taylor, John Jenkins got their shooting strokes on and uh, fortunately avoided that. Mm -hmm. Sure enough. So it, it'll be, a, like you said, that, uh, that ability to get off to a quick start would be big looking forward to the NCAA tournament, but it certainly helped, and Vanderbilt was able to come together and and get past those teams like Georgia and Ole Miss. And like we always said, uh, being able to beat teams when you don't play your best is really the key mark of, of a great team. Absolutely. And Vanderbilt really showed that, especially in those first two rounds of the tournament. Absolutely. And I, I guess we want to look a little bit deeper into the SEC championship game against Kentucky. Third time the teams had met this season. Uh, a lot of Kentucky fans are going to want to tell you that they didn't really care about the SEC championship uh, because all they do is hang national championship banners and rub is true. Uh, also retired numbers, so call them on that. Uh, but third meeting, uh, and if Kentucky didn't care, uh, Coach Calipari was playing his starters and yelling at the refs, so I don't think that's something that they can, they can legitimately claim. But Vanderbilt oh, impressed me so much in that game, took Kentucky's best punches and came back and punched them right back in the mouth. There were three separate times in that second half where it looked like Kentucky was going to blow the game out of the water. The very pro-Kentucky crowd was about ready to explode, and every time the Commodores answered back. And another one of those key stretches, in my opinion, was when at the end of the first half, Vanderbilt had 
um, had, a, had, a, had a modest lead going into the final stretch, and then uh, they, they started to falter. Kentucky came roaring back, and with about a minute and a half left, uh, Kentucky really looked like they would stretch out a lead, uh, you know, at least a five or seven point lead going into the second, in, into halftime, which is something that, that Vanderbilt has really struggled with, is, uh, is, is letting down their defense um, going in, heading into the halftime. And sure enough, the, the team came together. Jeff Taylor picked up a big steal, drew a foul, and hit two free throws at the end of the half. And instead of it being you know, a five or seven point Kentucky lead, Vanderbilt went into the half tied. Uh, I think that was huge to kind of to, to curtail Kentucky's uh, momentum heading into the half and, and really have the momentum going into the second half and come away with the victory. Absolutely. And what I think could arguably be described as the greatest win in program history. Oh, absolutely. Second SEC championship ever for this team. Second time in, in the SEC championship game, both wins against number one Kentucky teams. Uh, but despite that, still a number five seed for the Commodores in the tournament. I know we were thinking with beating the number one overall seed, maybe we lock down a four seed, you know, move up a little bit. It kind of concerns me that despite winning that SEC championship game, Commodores still ranked as a five seed and do have, quite frankly, a tough road to the Final Four. Yeah, and looking at that, um, looking at the Commodore Road to the Final Four, it's something that I think could end up being kind of favorable for the Commodores. Yeah, it's, it's certainly, at first glance I should say, it looks bad. Got another very good mid-major team in the first round. Certainly. A strong Big Ten team in the second round, potentially mm -hmm. if, if uh, Wisconsin gets past Montana, which I don't think they will. <laughs> More on that later in the bold prediction segment. Uh, but then you've got a Syracuse team it was pretty unanimously the second best team in the country, but center Fab Mello out for the entire tournament. And yeah, I know I'm smiling and I shouldn't be, but I just don't care because that is great news for the Commodores. Uh, if they can get to Syracuse, they're now going to have to rely on two bench players to try and contain Festus Azili, a guy who even the National Defensive Player of the Year in Anthony Davis could not contain this weekend. That is certainly going to be a fun storyline to watch if Vanderbilt does indeed meet up with Syracuse. And that is something that, you know, like Jackson just said, Vanderbilt will have a very defined advantage against Syracuse down low. And with Lance uh, Goldborn as well, who has shown glimpses of offensive production when he can drive to the basket, maybe step outside for a jump shot, um, and, and on putbacks on the offensive glass. This is something that both Festus and Lance have really improved on as the years goes on on the uh, offensive boards. So this is a, this is, that's a game that Vanderbilt is really has a relatively clear path to the Elite Eight if, uh, if, if things can't, they can get past Harvard in the first round and things fall in their favor. Yeah, and uh, looking at that road, I guess we should start by breaking down that Harvard game first. A lot of concern coming out of the black and gold faithful uh, upon seeing that we have a team that's quite frankly underseeded uh, as a 12. Harvard's a very good team, spent more weeks ranked in the top 25 than Vanderbilt did this mm -hmm. year, uh, and a team that certainly looks like it could be a giant killer. However, in my mind, the teams that upset Vanderbilt, uh, it, there's a formula that mm -hmm. we've straightened out over these last two or three years, and that is teams that are very fast, play high tempo, press a lot, teams that have one athletic guard who can create his own shot and can nail threes. Harvard doesn't have any of those. It's not Harvard, and that's the thing. A lot of people do seem concerned, just kind of, for whatever reason, they see Harvard as a good mid-major team, and they think that because they are a good mid-major team, they'll give Vanderbilt trouble. And quite frankly, that's not the case. No. Um, a year ago, I wrote that Vanderbilt would struggle with Richmond in the opening round, and that happened. And this year, preparing to write my column for tomorrow, and it, it's, it just won't happen. No. Uh, looking at Harvard's team, looking at the matchups that they'll create, um, Vanderbilt has the advantage in almost every way. Um, uh, Boston's own Bob Ryan was on a Nashville radio station yesterday uh, talking about the matchup. He, he, he follows Harvard very closely up there in the Boston area, and he said about the same, uh, yeah. saying that the matchups are awful. Um, Vanderbilt has almost the advantage in almost every category. Um, they're much more athletic, much more skilled, and, and honestly much better, much better coached. Yeah. Um, I think the line came out at a five and a half point Vanderbilt favorite, um, and it's, I honestly could see Vanderbilt winning by more than ten. Absolutely, and if you look to the second round, you have a more, more than likely a Wisconsin team that's the same as Harvard, just a little bit better and a little bit bigger. A team that slows it down, a team that actually turns the ball over a lot. Both Harvard and Wisconsin, surprisingly high turnover rates for a team that plays as slowly as the two do. A teams that don't rebound as well as Vanderbilt does, and teams that rely on stone-cold lockdown defense but against a team that you don't have the matchups with against, uh, like they're going to have with Vanderbilt, 
tough to see those two teams coming away with victories against the Commodores. And see, that's another thing, talking about Wisconsin and their first round matchup with Montana. Montana is exactly the kind of giant killer team yep. that could give Wisconsin, or for that matter, Vanderbilt, yep. lots of problems. Will Cherry, remember that's that? That's exactly right, Will Cherry, the speedy point guard yep. uh, for Montana. Not he, to be confused with Mark Cherry, uh, VSG vice presidential candidate. <laughs> that's candidate, that is, that's exactly right. <laughs> um, so look, looking ahead, uh, like I said, Montana is a team that really could give Vanderbilt a lot of trouble if that happened in the in, yep. the, in the real second round or the round of 32, whatever we're going to call it. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and so it's the uh, second round. The second round. Get over yourselves. Yeah. Um, but uh, absolutely. And then you look to that Sweet 16 game, which mm -hmm. the Commodores haven't been in since 2007. You'd like to you'd like to pencil Syracuse in there, but uh, without Fab Mello. Uh, Kansas State, coached by Frank Martin, who is absolutely terrifying, by the way. That's true. Uh, could certainly upset them there, but, uh, you know, just, just for kicks, let's go ahead and write Syracuse into that spot. Syracuse was already a team that was going to have trouble with this Vanderbilt offense. They play a 2-3 zone, which is liable to be broken open by a good outside shooting team like Vanderbilt. Uh, and really the anchor of that defense and who allowed them to play that way was Fab Mello, a guy who sits back, has three blocks a game, and guards the paint. Syracuse no longer has that, and it's going to be much easier to stretch that Syracuse zone uh, and provide an upset for Vanderbilt. Yeah, you're exactly right. With a team like Vanderbilt with four or five guys on the court at any time that can hit a three-point shot, uh, that just doesn't suit itself very well to Syracuse's zone, for, for Syracuse, that is. Right. Uh, they're going to have a lot of trouble containing Jenkins, containing Taylor, uh, and, and even guys uh, like Tinsley and maybe even Chingang, who, if he ever decides to step back and take a three. Um, so, look, I mean, if Vanderbilt does make it that far to the Sweet 16, the matchups, again, are very much in Vanderbilt's favor. Yes. Uh, and this tournament is all about the matchups. So, looking forward, um, and, and all the way up to the Sweet 16, there really isn't a team that Vanderbilt will likely play who should have a decided advantage over them. Right. But once you get to the Elite Eight, obviously, a anyone you play in the Sweet 16 going on is good. Uh, there's no doubts about that. But in the Elite Eight, Commodores are likely going to see Ohio State or Florida State. Mm -hmm. Florida State, one of the premier defensive teams in the country. Ohio State, uh, a team from the Big Ten, plays good defense, has a lot of size, uh, a very good center in Jared Sollinger, someone who is going to challenge Festus Azili. That's a tough matchup no matter really what, uh, which way you look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Jaron Solinger is one of a very few big men in the entire country who I think will give uh, Fessa Cezilli serious problems yeah. down low. So that, that's a game, again, if that does take place, that Vanderbilt will, that'll be, in my opinion, it could be one of the best games of the entire tournament. Oh, yeah. The way those two, team match, the way those two teams match up uh, if Ohio State gets that far. You know, looking at the Big Ten Championship game, they did lose, but they played very well against a tough Michigan State team. Against a Michigan State team that is a number one seed right. in this tournament. Uh, and I, I guess now would be the time for us to move on to our trademarks, Jackson Reed's bold predictions. Bold predictions. Uh, because we have a lot. Uh, I have, hey, this is, all right, all right good, yeah. <laughs> this is your winning bracket right here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. My first bold prediction, see, I got the pin. It's you got it. like Digger Phelps, <laughs> except I don't use highlighters because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> first bold prediction, our hipster brethren down the street, Belmont, Sweet 16 teams. Count it. <laughs> Belmont to the Sweet 16, I'll take it. Um, not, on, not on this faulty bracket, which is the official 3D sports radio show bracket. Yeah, that was, uh, that was largely influenced by uh, Peter Nygaard and George Barclay, who don't know as much about basketball as I do. But uh, so anyways, my bold prediction is Long Beach State also going all the way to the Sweet 16. like it. A very good grinding team, slows things down, forces turnovers. Uh, we saw them earlier this year. You may have noticed them in the Mali Invitational. A uh, very, very good team. If I'm not mistaken, they upset UConn. They definitely upset multiple power teams in that, in that tournament. They're a great team. I uh, look for them to succeed in the tournament, so make it all the way to the Sweet 16. Absolutely. Bold prediction number three, Montana taking down Wisconsin. Will Cherry, he's going to get it done for the Grizzlies. Big Sky reigns supreme. No I'll, doubts about it. I'll take it. And for, and for my, my next one, one thing that you might not see is incredibly bold, I'm going to go ahead and take Vanderbilt for the national championship. That was going to be um, my next one. That's, that's the one. That's the one. That's it. Uh, that's in my Final Four bracket, and that's in most of our yeah. students' Final Four brackets. Yeah. Uh, I'm, going to go I'm going to go a step further. Bold prediction number five. Your national title game is going to be a rematch of the SEC title game. Same score. Vanderbilt wins 71-64. You can go ahead and mark that one down. I, that would be, has that ever happened before, SEC history? 
Uh, you know, I don't know. And we're, I'm looking at my bracket. My Final Four is Kentucky, Missouri, Vanderbilt, and UNC. That's two SEC teams and one future SEC team. By the way, uh, Missouri, uh, Missouri fans, you've so very much endeared yourselves to me over this past week by winning the Big 12 championship. And during the closing seconds, the fans start chanting, S-E-C, <laughs> S-E-C. I didn't want you in the conference, as I pointedly stated on this show, but welcome. You guys, you're one of us now, and I'm glad to have you, and I'll, I'll be glad to have you in my Final Four this year as well. I'll, I'll make one last bold prediction. All right. This one also made by the official 3D Sports Bracket, which we'll, okay. we'll try and post online somewhere. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. This one was not made by me, but I like it. Taking Iona all the way to, uh, to the Sweet 16, I believe, knocking out Murray State, uh, getting past the round of 32 there. It's a bold prediction, barely made it into the tournament. Uh, a, de a, a solid team. They look good. One of those mid-major teams that couldn't win their conference tournament, but had a very strong season. Uh, so look for Iona, a team that has a chip on their shoulder. A lot of people don't think they belong in the NCAA right. tournament. Uh, but I really think they could get it together, especially considering they'll likely be playing a team like Murray State, um, who, who's just not that athletic and not that good, um, that I really think that Iona could take a long way into the tournament. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to disagree with that one. I like Murray State in Louisville, Kentucky, their home state, to take that one. But the thing to take away from this is that Vanderbilt's winning the national championship. And there's no way you can get around it. Now, another Vanderbilt team that has the opportunity to win the national championship is the women's basketball team, also in the NCAA tournament this week. However, they will be playing in Nashville, wrapped up a number seven seed, uh, opening up play this week behind Jasmine Lister, Christina Foggy, uh, all the girls. Looking for big things from the Commodores. However, a tough second round matchup with number two seed Duke, mm -hmm. likely. May, may be a short run for, for our Commodores, but no doubt been a great season for them. Uh, and then taking a look around the bubble, your baseball team is, at the start of this show, winning 7-2 to over Siena. Seventh uh, inning. Over on the baseball diamond in the seventh inning. Uh, they, yeah, yeah, they're playing Siena right now. <laughs> uh, your women's lacrosse team, who is, uh, well, I guess we still got a baseball picture. What's the name? <laughs> Uh, your women's lacrosse team, number seven in the country, taking on Louisville on Wednesday. So going to be another, another good, good game out there on the Asher turf field. Uh, but I guess, I guess that's it. So for Reed Harris, I'm Jackson Martin. We'll see you next time, and go Doors.